Welcome to First Christian Church and participating in our Christmas Eve service. Thank you for being part of our community tonight. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy. To us is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, the Messiah, the Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth. As we see the darkness of the world and the darkness of the winter season, we are witness to the word of God coming into the world, the light for all people. The light comes into the world, shines in the darkness, and is never extinguished by the world. Christ is the light of the world. We seek hope. The prophet said, the days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. We have waited and we are ready. We are God's people and we wait in hope. peace. Let us speak the words of old, the words that gave comfort to God's people. From the 72nd Psalm, may all kings bow down to him and all nations serve him, for he will deliver the needy who cry out, the afflicted who have no one to help them. He will take pity on the weak and the needy and save the needy from death. He will rescue them from oppression and violence, for precious is their blood in his sight. Then all nations will be blessed through him, and they will call him blessed. Praise be to the Lord God, the God of Israel, who comes in peace. We seek joy. Wonderful things will happen. The blind will see the lame will walk, the deaf will hear. Lepers will be cleansed, and the dead will be raised, and the poor will have good news preached to them. We thank God for keeping the promise of the good news as we light the candle of joy. We seek love. A name is everything, they say. And what is God's child to be named? Emmanuel, God with us. God with us always, forever, continually. God with us, filling us, guiding us, comforting us, giving us new possibilities. Let us prepare our hearts, O oh God, for the coming of your Son, Emmanuel, into the world. Strengthen our faith, give us hope, and help us act in the name of the one who comes in love. God sent Jesus, the beloved and only Son, so we could understand the laws, instructions, and directions better. God sent Jesus to be Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus showed us taught us, lived among us. Jesus, God's Son, gave everything he had for us. By this gift, which surpasses any gift, God is saying to us, I understand what it is like to live on earth. I was there with you. We seek Christ. Tonight we celebrate and affirm that gift to us. Emmanuel, God with us. God understands and loves us because God is among us. Let us pray. God of eternal light, tonight we worship in awe and wonder on this Christmas Eve. We give thanks that you cared enough for your people to come and live among us so that we might know your ways. Christ's name. Amen.
it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord, and this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the lies. In on Good toward one. So it was when the angels have gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to us to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. Now, when they had seen him, they made it widely known that saying which was told, was told to them concerning the, this child. And all those who heard it marveled at all at the things, at those things which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all of these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God, for all of the things that they had heard and seen as it was told to them. O oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, O oh, was born. O oh, night divine, O oh, night, O oh, night divine.
the light of faith serenely beaming with glowing hearts by his cradle we stand so led by light of a star sweetly gleaming here came the wise men from the orient land the king of kings laid us in lowly manger in all our trials is born to be our friend he knows our need to our weakness no stranger behold Shall he break for the slave is our brother, and in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise we that all within us praise his holy name fall on your knees oh hear the angel voices oh night divine oh night when Christ was Merry Christmas again. I'd like to thank the Brown family for sharing the Christmas story, according to Luke earlier in this service. Throughout Advent, we have been preparing ourselves for this evening. And tonight, we welcome a new beginning. Tonight, we receive Christ into our lives. On Christmas Day in 1531, Martin Luther preached from the Christmas story during the morning service. However, in the afternoon service, he preached from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. He began the afternoon service by recalling that the congregation had heard the Christmas story earlier that day, and he told them they would not hear it again. Rather, they would learn how to make use of it. Our scripture selection for this evening's homily is Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived 
in a land of deep darkness. On them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually until there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time onward and evermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Loving God, by the Spirit, we ask you to teach us. By your gift, inspire us. We ask you to treasure treasure us as we treasure your words and help us, Lord, to ponder the things that we hear in this time with our hearts through your Son, Jesus Christ, your word made flesh. Amen. When this portion of Isaiah was written around the 8th century before the Common Era, the words were spoken about the birth of a specific king in Judah. In the generations that followed, these words were applied to other kings and eventually to an expected Messiah. Words and traditions are passed down by those that came before us. Some people before us, understandably, heard the promise within the scripture and saw it fulfilled in Jesus. Verse 6, a child has been born for us. We now interpret Isaiah's prophecy, an astounding claim. God has come to the world in the form of a baby. Through events that transpired in history, there are concrete promises delivered to real, suffering human beings. God promises justice and righteousness to us. Given the darkness of a global pandemic that alters how we function daily, the darkness of a virus that is claiming as many Americans each day as we lost in the attacks on the World Trade Center on 9-11, we are burdened by the shared responsibility to keep each other healthy. And yet still, there are boots of warriors and garments rolled in blood still plaguing portions of the world. But fear no more. Out of the chaos, uncertainty, violence, and the weight of the world laid across our shoulders, a light shines down. The gospel of a child born to Mary transforms the darkness. The images of violence and hardship are collectively waved as void through the birth of the child. The central message of the text of Isaiah is that the birth and its celebration are signs of hope. The prophecy of Isaiah turns darkness into an illumination from God. This passage speaks to the nature of the king's reign as being of perpetual peace, founded on justice and righteousness. We can gather from these words what was going on in the world at the time. It wasn't all that different from today. And we are peacefully comforted. The coming reign of God will be one that brings an end to the dark and harsh alternative. God's instrument for establishing justice is a new king, one that exercises power in accordance with the Lord's will. Let's have a quick look back at the names of this new king. 
wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. These titles are important because they shed light on the characteristics, the personality traits of the king and of God. A wonderful counselor comes with praiseworthy wisdom and decision making. The title mighty God is given to a human ruler. History and our scriptures tell us kings in ancient Judah could be called God, but now it is consistent within our tradition to view the new king, the one we worship, Jesus Christ, as God's son. The paternal language of everlasting father refers to the king's care and provision to his subjects. And finally, Prince of Peace. This provides the image of the absence of military conflict and other domestic violence during the king's reign. The people who walked in biblical antiquity, they knew wars, they knew domestic powers that would oppress them, tax them, steal their land and possessions, take away their ability to work for themselves or for their family. And there are still wars in the world today. Tyrants are unjustly ruling over people. People are, are oppressed and will risk everything because they have nothing to escape the reality of a soul-killing life. And trust is absent from the world. Nations spy on other nations. Truthful information is discredited by selfish opinion and the desire for power. If we painted a picture of endless peace, of justice and righteousness, what would it look like? The harsh reality of darkness in the world would be evident. Reality cannot be escaped. However, God's kingdom would be breaking forth into the world. God is coming to dwell with humanity. It is Christmas Eve. Here comes hope incarnate. The birth of a baby signals more than enough salvation for the world. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. This Christmas may not feel normal to you, yet perhaps oddly very familiar. We're not struggling alone. We are celebrating as a community. Hope is not diminished. Peace triumphs over chaos. You can rejoice at being in the presence of the light and God yearns for your love while unconditionally expressing love right back to you. Through the love of God, the world and all that is in it is redeemed. We've been lighting Advent candles throughout the Advent season to symbolically prepare us to welcome Christ into our lives. We recognize the darkness and we see the light illuminating an alternate path for the faithful to follow. It is God's path of peace and righteousness. Tonight, we remember God breaking into the broken world that we know, and we light the Christ candle and reflect on what our faith calls us to do. We are to be the light of the world. Merry Christmas. Amen. Yeah.
And now a time for communion. Our reading is from the book of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Good writers bring fiction to life, but they are not truly creating something from nothing. They're using their God-given imaginations to invent their characters. Jesus, on the other hand, took nothing and turned it into everything. In powerful words that echo the first verse in the Bible, John, the disciple, wrote, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has, that has been made. The one who spoke the universe into being and fashioned it from his own imagination came to hang on the cross to redeem and restore his creation. The one that made us also loves us and gave himself for us. Imagine that. Let us pray. Father in heaven, it boggles my mind to think of how you imagined me and brought me into existence. And you also planned the way for me to be restored to wholeness with you through the bread and through the cup. Amen. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
let us all go and walk in the light of God. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Rejoice. God is with you. Merry Christmas.